Lego man, why don't you pick on someone your own size? Why don't you go out there and take the piss out of your own favorite team? Don't go out there talking about Habs fans in this way when you're not going to acknowledge how your favorite team's fan base also does the same thing. Now, that's a comment that I saw a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit, in the comment section of the What Happened to Ryan Paling video. And that video, essentially, if you did not see it, was me going back in time to 2018, 2019-ish, and seeing what Montreal Canadiens fans had to say about that player. It was an interesting exercise to take a look at the past, take a look at what we thought this guy would be able to be, and because this was such a fun experiment, what I wanted to do was do the same thing and maybe make this sort of a reoccurring, I don't know if series is the right word to use, but we'll do this once in a while. We're needing video topics in the summer, right? So why don't we go out there and do that? Let's take a blast to the past and talk about old prospects in different NHL teams that we've made videos about and gather what we all thought about these prospects at the time. The objective of these videos is to say how wrong we were, because, spoiler alert, I'm not going to go out there and make a video saying, oh yeah, all these New Jersey fans were saying that Jack Hughes was going to be good, and guess what? He's good now. Like, that's boring. Let's go back in time and talk about one of the biggest busts the Vancouver Canucks have had in probably their entire existence as a franchise. We're going over to the 2016 NHL entry draft and talking about fifth overall Oli Yolevi. Now we've made a ton of videos about Yolevi in the past decade, near decade pretty much, because we would talk about when he was going good, we would talk about when he was going bad, we were talking about all the updates as he was a Vancouver Canucks prospect, and especially this became a point of contention when you acknowledge what some of the guys taken after Yolevi had done in the NHL. Spoiler alert for those that needed the update, Ole Olevi is a 25-year-old defenseman, 6'2", 205, drafted by the Vancouver Canucks in the fifth overall spot in 2016, taken before some really notable names like Matthew Kachuk, Clayton Keller, Mikhail Sergachev, Charlie McAvoy, Jacob Chitrin. Yeah, the list goes on as to valuable talents taken after Ole Olevi, but Olevi was a guy that never panned out in Vancouver. Now, you could say this was due to a number of things. You could say it was due to his work ethic. It was due to his actual ceiling not being too high. You could say that it was injuries. All of these things might be a little bit true, some more than others, but long story short, after being the top defenseman for the London Knights in 15-16, Ole Olevi was never able to be the two-way monster that Canucks fans thought he would be. Back in this time frame, we all said, okay, if he becomes the next Vancouver Canucks number one defender and he plays sort of a similar... Alex Edler type of role. He's not the fastest, not the biggest, not the strongest, but he's solid. He can play well defensively, he can put up points. If Ole Olevi can be that, then we're happy. But he never became anything remotely close to that. He was not a fraction of what that was supposed to be. Over the years developing with Utica and Vancouver, he was loaned out to TPS in the Liga, it just never was there for Ole Olevi, and as a result, you saw him get traded to the Florida Panthers sometime before 2021, and this is when his career took a change from being a Vancouver Canucks guy. However, there are a boatload of videos on this channel, some from as far back as 2017, talking about Olevi and saying how... Firstly, he is not a bust. Vancouver Canucks didn't make the wrong choice with Finnish D-Man in 2016. This was one of the first videos I made as a regular full-time hockey content creator. This was sort of when I was transitioning into making Canucks videos, and I thought it would be a great idea to revisit the comments of this particular video as well as a few others. So let's go back to... When was this video uploaded? October 26th, 2017. We're approaching six years on this baby. And the top comment from Bad Boy Film says this, Ole Olevi came into camp knowing he had no chance to play this year and it showed. Next year he'll make the team and will be a solid top four defenseman. By next year, Bad Boy is referring to 2018-19. Now, in reality, 2018-19 saw Yolevi put up 13 points in 18 Utica Comets games. He was slowed down by injuries once again. Okay, not really his fault there. Injuries are injuries. 
The next comment here from Dylan says, I was at the Young Stars tournament and Ole Olevi looked great. His playmaking was unreal. Brett McLean goes out there and says this, you kids will be eating your words when Ole Olevi joins the NHL. Sometimes it's better to adjust in the juniors or minors whenever than the first year in the NHL. You've got Jay He Vlog saying this, he is pretty frigging lit right now, his first season in pro league in Finland. And then you got a bunch of other comments actually saying that Matthew Kachuk going after Olevi was already a red flag and it was sort of a bad idea to take a D-man this high. And so while I will acknowledge that there were some Canucks fans back in this time frame that did feel he had top pairing, top four, stud defenseman potential, there were a lot that were going out there saying some of the opposite. Now, I have another video for you that I wanted to go out there and bring up. Take a look at this. From September 4th, 2019, so two years after the first video, this is approaching four years old. The plan for Ole Olevi, Vancouver Canucks prospect finally ready to play. You could take a look at some of the comments here in this one. They're a bit more optimistic. I like that they didn't rush him into the NHL when he wasn't ready, but it's unfortunate that he has had injuries. Yep, very, very unfortunate. RJ to one says he definitely has a future with the Canucks unless we trade him. He's coming back from an injury, so he needs time to be himself again. In two years time, he'll be a Canuck. Mark my words. Okay, well, two years time was 2021-2022, and in that season... He was not a Canuck. He got traded by then. Yeah, unfortunate. Ole Olevi's last season as a Vancouver Canuck, if anybody is interested, 2020-2021, it was the North Division year. It was a bad year for everybody. Olevi had three points in 23 games played. He was kind of in that weird, what do they call it, black aces of the team? Like, the call-up replacement guys? Yeah, Olevi wasn't given much playing time, and as a result, his overall development suffered. And you had some Canucks fans back a few years beforehand saying, yeah, as long as he doesn't get injured, as long as he gets ice time, he'll be okay. But unfortunately, it does not seem like this is the case. Dill says, as long as Yolevi is healthy, he'll be a top four defenseman. Well, he hasn't been the healthiest over the past few years. Even last season, he had 38 games played in the AHL. And even before that, we had some notice in 2021 that he was under health protocols, like whatever that means. At least that's what Fox Sports goes out there and says. So yeah, as long as he stays healthy, he'll be okay. He really hasn't had that and it's unfortunate. There are some more comments pretty much saying the same thing, and even if you look at other videos on this channel, they all sort of fall into the same category, but it is just kind of interesting how after everything went down, you could see from 2016, 2017, the Canucks fans' optimism for this guy slowly withering away after you saw Matthew Kachuk break into the NHL year one, was a very good player for Calgary, there was already writing on the wall, huge writing on the wall, that this would be a bad move. How the Vancouver Canucks screwed up by not taking a guy that would actually be NHL caliber in any sort of form in the future. Now, maybe it was never that bad. Like, maybe I think a lot of Canucks fans sort of had this idea that, yeah, Yolevi's gonna play, like he's gonna be an NHL defenseman, most likely down the line. But you can't really predict injuries, you can't really predict health complications, nor undisclosed protocol health things that Yolevi apparently went through according to Fox Sports. You can't predict these things, and as a result, Yolevi went from what was gonna be a top four lock on the Canucks D side, a guy who would inevitably play behind Quinn Hughes as a solid puck-moving two-way guy with an okay frame, to what he is now, a top five bust. Really, really bad bust. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What happened to Ole Olevi? I think I did my best in trying to explain just kind of the outline of what happened. The guy had injuries, the guy was suffering through poor development, and he was never able to capitalize on the opportunities that he did have. What are your thoughts on all that? We didn't even get into the conversation about him pretty much sprawled out on the ice when the Canucks were doing their drills and everything, how his conditioning wasn't amazing as his career went on too. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about Ole Olevi? How do you feel about his career with the Vancouver Canucks? And how do you feel about everything with hindsight included? Matthew Kachuk, Clayton Keller, Charlie McAvoy, these guys, Vancouver passed on all of them for Ole. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.